Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel where I help you become a better artist. Today, we are going to draw the Hydra. And based on popular opinion by a poll that I posted a couple days ago, that one won out. Although I thought Krampus had it and then Dragon was there. But I just want everybody to know that of course I'm going to draw Krampus and Dragon at some point. There are many other creatures I'm going to draw. Without further ado, let's draw a Hydra. Now, those of you that aren't familiar with the Hydra and don't really know what it is, Hydra is a mythical beast. There has been a long-standing argument about how many heads the Hydra actually has. Is it a hundred? Is it four? Is it six? And the common belief seems to be nine. Uh, the story of the Hydra is rather awesome because it's, you know, Hercules battled this thing and whenever he chopped the head off, two would grow back. So his nephew, Lulaeus, had this brilliant idea of cauterizing the stump of the head so it couldn't grow back, you know, burning it and uh, ended up defeating it. All right. So I'm laying down some really light lines here. These, what I like doing on a creature this complex is pretending that there is a wire going through the creature as if I'm building it from clay. So currently we have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, let's do one here, seven, and then eight, and uh, nine going up. Okay, so those of you looking at this, it probably looks like a plant, and rightfully so. Um, again, when it's this complex, I will work on basic shapes. This is a serpent, so what I'm going to do is have some rather cool-looking knobs at the end of these uh, gesture lines here. All right. So those of you that are watching me for the first time, I am a creature slash character artist for games and film. Um, you know, I've had I've been in the industry for about ten years now. I love creatures. I have a whole playlist for it, but I also love teaching. So I, I'm excited to get back into the whole creature bit. So what I'm going to do for everybody first, and just for this design in general, I'm going to do a head right out of the gate. And then what I like to do is I like to build off of the creature's head because when I get the personality down and the different traits that are on the face and the skull, the bone structure, that tends to dictate what the rest of the body is going to be. I haven't decided yet if I want it to be a 100% serpent, and that means no legs at all, it's just swimming through the water, or dragon leg. It probably will be a dragon just because this thing needs to go on land and fight things. Okay, um, Okay. so in that case, I think what I'll do is zoom in just a little bit. Okay, I'll just zoom in a tad just so you can see that I'm going to start the head right there. All right, I'm going to get the eye in. Right, like that. Now, I, I do have to pay attention a lot to perspective because these heads are going every which direction. But there's a central area where the heads are growing out of. So each neck is going to need to be bent in a certain way so it's not clipping or in the way of another head. I'm going to be using a lot of atmospheric perspective to push most of the heads back off into the distance because we don't need to show them. All right, so what I'm doing now is I'm just giving it an eyeball. I'm gonna inset that eye into the skull, give it a rather deep eye socket. Again, I ain't playing around. Hydras aren't nice, all right? As a matter of fact, one of the most feared mythological creatures in history. Uh, this thing is no joke, and I wouldn't want to fight it. All right. It's funny that now that I'm drawing this, me being a dinosaur nerd that I am ever since I was four years old, I immediately started thinking of the Elasmosaurus. Now, the Elasmosaurus, it you know, it resembles the Plesiosaur, you know, Loch Ness Monster, but Elasmosaurus, if you've seen the skulls of these things, they are terrifying and their teeth are huge. So I think what I want to do is just make this bite so ridiculous that even if this thing couldn't eat, it still could just bite you in half with teeth going everywhere. So I'm going to draw that membrane down here. And if anything, whenever you're doing creature mouths and they're opening, and I've been over this several times in some of my lessons, the you have to make sure that the jaw will hinge open correctly. 
a problem that I used to have is I would draw the bottom jaw and it looked like when it was opening, it would just go straight down, but these jaws bend. Okay. So they, they, they go in an arc. Okay. Because the bottom one has to close and clamp with the top one. All right. So that's what I'm going to do. Okay. So again, I'm paying most attention to the eyeball area. Let's do it. All right. There we go. Cool. I've had my caffeine for the day, so I'm, I'm, I'm ready to go. Hopefully everybody had a good Christmas. I know my boys went nuts with all the Hot Wheels that I gave them. Uh, okay. All right. So yeah, yeah, I'm not really, not really happy about it yet, but Hey, it's still early in the design. Once I get this in, cause there's going to be stuff on the neck. There's going to be stuff on the body and everything. What I'm going to do to make it quite horrific is I'm going to pick and choose the directions that I want each tooth to come out of the head of, right? Cause I can, and I don't care. I want this thing to be terrifying. It's not practical. Okay. These things were not real, but it's fun to make them think that they were real, you know? So I'll probably give it a rather blunt head here. So now that this creature is turned at this angle, the, the line that I gave it right here, I want to treat it as if it's a 90 degree angle from the center of its head. So here was the wire frame for the neck and it was swooping around here. That's going to continue down the center of the head. And I want everybody to remember that if you're drawing along with me now, or you're just drawing another type of creature, give your subject matter a center line so that it gives you some frame of reference or not frame of reference. It gives you some distance to know that, okay, so if the eyeballs here, I'm just going to go straight across because this is a 90 degree angle. And then there's the other eyebrow, I guess you'd call it, or the brow ridge. So you know that it's in perspective. Okay. Just treat everything as a, a wireframe before you start putting on details. Okay. And then here I'm lightly putting in where I want the ridges for the teeth to go. Now notice I haven't shaded anything yet. I haven't put any values in yet. It's because I wanted to get a good feel for this face. I've drawn enough serpents and dragons to be pretty comfortable with what the jaw is going to be doing before I start shading, before I laying down value. Now I will cover this just like my other lessons with value that's going to run across the entire body like this. So I can just give a quick little coating right here. You can probably hear that too. It's such a fun sound. And I'm going to turn it. And then I'm going to do pass number two. I'm not pushing harder. Those of you that are coming in for the first time, don't know who I am or my drawing method. Uh, I suggest watching my other videos where I show you my, my drawing technique on how I lay down values. There we go. I'm just going to do three passes for now. That, that'll make me happy. This isn't a big drawing either. This is a eight and a half by 11 moleskin pad turned horizontally. All right. So I need to give some indication that there is bone structure here. So anytime that you see, uh, lumps or places where the body shape is changing, that's what we like to call bony landmarks. And bony landmarks are very, very important within creature design because what it does is it shows you that there is a structure underneath the, the fat, the skin, the fur, the scales, everything that you're drawing for your creature and, and people too. Maybe not a, if you're, if you listening right now are not a creature designer, but you design characters, same thing. Okay. Our elbows, our cheekbones, our wrists, you know, like this part that nobody ever draws, <laughs> just draw the forearm straight down. Yeah. So just remember that now this eye, I'm going to need to pop off a little bit more. So I'm going to do a darker line here and I'm going to put some shadow in like this. And I'm going to put some shadow right where I believe the fatty tissue and the muscles are going to sit right above the eye. Okay. So this whole thing right here is the, the brow ridge. Okay. The, I mean, humans have it too. Dogs have it, bison, whatever. It's the, it's the part in the skull where the, the eye sockets grow out and then the bone structure had to follow that eye socket to protect it. So it, that's why we have eyelashes. That's why we have eyelids and that's why we have the brow. Okay. Cause it protects us. Now I'm going to put in some fun little, shadows here right, like this. Okay. So 
those of you that have subscribed to me sooner and saw different methods when I was sketching these, you're probably not used to seeing me draw stuff from scratch. And I definitely wanted to do more of these also, so you get a whole spectrum on just how I tackle this stuff. Okay, so the head, as of right now, sure, I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. Um, this is a serpent. So when I think of serpent, I do think of cool things that might grow off of the head, but not really on land dwelling animals. Okay. So I'm going to give it a fin like look, and I just want to make sure that, that each shape that I'm doing is rather dynamic. Okay. Um, now these shapes coming out here, notice I am totally winging this guys. I have some reference up on my computer screen that way of 50 or 60 different images of hydras and they're, they're all vastly different. They all have different amounts of heads. Some of them just look like westernized dragons. I'm looking at some that are, you know, carved into hieroglyphics and I'm just going, what the heck? So again, I'm, I'm using that as reference, but I'm going to put my own little twist on this stuff. Okay. Let's do, and these will not be equal in, or what is the word? I don't know. Anyway, th these will not be equal on both sides. These will not be symmetrical. That's what I should say. There we go. Instead, I'm going to make these as unique as possible. Now notice I'm giving this some attitude. There we go. Okay. So I want to think about that bottom jaw because it is crazy, especially because the Elasmosaurus, this is the dinosaur that I love so much, you know, those teeth just pour off from the side. So when this sucker opens its mouth, it's going to have the same thing. So I want to make sure that I'm indicating very faintly where those teeth are going to be popping off. This is the fun part. Whenever you draw a bottom jaw with teeth jutting outwards and it's in perspective and it's coming at you, the teeth are not going to look normal. Okay. If they're bending towards you, it's kind of like if you take your finger and you turn your, turn your, uh, hand like this, you know, that tooth's coming out of the lip of the gum. It's kind of like that. It's just very strange angle. There we go. But you know what? It's, it's a very strange animal. Okay, this thing is has multiple heads. It killed a lot of soldiers and, and other warriors because the head grew back. It's pretty crazy. I'm only going to indicate a tongue in there. I, I don't really want to give it a long tongue, per se, just because... Okay, forget it. I changed my mind. Yes, I am, now that I look at that. All right, I'm going to draw that tongue up here. See, this is, this is the fun part when you just draw stuff on the fly. I do have to darken the front of the head because it is bending downwards and the light is not going to be as prominent down there. All right, and then I'm starting to notice things around the head that I did not have before. So see, look at this. It's not going to be symmetrical on the other side. I'm just going to start making these come out. So they're almost going to look like crazy tendrils and then tentacles and everything from, you know, something that swims under the ocean. All right. So now that we have that, I'm going to draw the mouth crease here. Um, I'm going to put some sharp indications of like aquatic fins, but maybe coming off of the jaw. Again, that eye socket's not dark enough. So I'm going to darken it up and that's when it starts to look pretty, pretty gnarly. There we go. Okay, so maybe I want to put the nose right up there. I'm just going to indicate it by two little um, dots. Put some value inside here near the head or all those crazy appendages are growing out of. But I do want there to be an indication that there is bone structure underneath everything that is happening. Okay, so for example, the forehead coming down to the nose. I'm going to put some shadow on top of that so it looks like both of those things on its head are actually coming forward. Um, so much so that I'm going to darken up some head shapes here 
to where it looks like there are ridges growing off. Right like that. All right. This thing's looking pretty gnarly, huh? Okay, so we want that. Thanks again, everybody, for for tuning into my drawing here. Um, now that the 2023 year is winding down, I just want to say, I mean, I've seen so much growth on my channel in the past month and a half, and it was just because of one video, and I had no idea it was going to do that. It was the, uh, they originally titled it, How to Texture Your Drawings. It just, it absolutely exploded, and I realized that I wasn't drawing enough traditionally, and that's, you know, what I love to do at heart, so, um, you know, I do, I do have some testimonials planned. I still have some videos to talk about the industry and stuff, but the majority of the stuff from now on is going to be my traditional work because I just want to teach as many people as possible. All right, there we go. I'm going to lift this up just a little bit so you can see it. I don't really have a powerful light on this, so please forgive me. I'm in the process of, you know, f figuring out uh, a good setup that I want to give my, you know, my channel and everything. Um, due to the thickness of that neck, we're going to have to start thinking about proportions here. Okay, so the body. I don't know if I'm going to have enough room on here, but we'll we'll see what happens. Maybe, maybe it'll stand like a Komodo dragon to where it's. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, I'm just going to lightly sketch a more outward stance, kind of like a crocodile or an alligator. There's a lot of stuff going on here. Kind of think about that anatomy too. Um, like I said, most of the most of the details are going into the head. All right. So without further ado, I have that head drawn. Oh, you better believe I'm going to draw the other heads. So let's do it. And none of these are going to be the same. So I'm going to lightly sketch this head. And I'm just going to have a blast with it. There we go. So let's see where that eye can go. Maybe each eye can be just a little different. Maybe the heads aren't all the same. And that's the fun part about creature design. Try not to be predictable. Alright, so we got all those. And, and again, this part of design is fun because you could be as messy as you damn well please. It does not matter how messy you are as long as you get your idea across. And I don't want to be too detailed in the back there, but I'm just going to darken it just enough to where you can see what's going on. Get a good side view of that bottom jaw. Um, I'm going to make that super dark and deep set so that it's just, there's no possible way this creature has any any caring soul in it. It doesn't care. It just wants to eat you and kill you and that's it. Okay, so let's do another part of the neck here. So I, have to, I really have to think about what I want to do with these body parts. Okay, um, now I probably will have to zoom out a little bit. Uh, let's see here. Okay, right about there. You should probably be able to see more of the heads now. All right, so you can see it's it's at a pretty gnarly stance. Um, there's going to be other factors that are going to have to have this creature stand the way it is. I mean, one, the weight of it. You have to think about the weight. And you also have to think about what the heck is it actually attacking? Is it Hercules? Probably. I forget the full story of it, but I think... While Hercules was fighting it, somebody was making a crab nip at the ankles of Hercules. Those of you that are like really into mythology, you can probably elaborate in the comments below. As a matter of fact, I, I definitely encourage you to about the story of this thing. Because I think Hercules had to worry about a, a giant crab biting its ankles as it was trying to fight the Hydra. So luckily, it, his, uh, his nephew... Um, Lolaeus. I almost said uh, Laolus from, you know, Hercules. Maybe it is Laolus. I don't know. All right, there we go. You can start to see these cool little details coming up. Yeah, there we go. 
All right, I'm gonna give it a wash of value. Just that neck part. Again, this is just to lay the foundation of Hydra. Um, man, I could probably draw this sucker because I love serpents and dragons. I could probably draw the Hydra for the next 10 hours. And I do plan on doing a time lapse of a full 10 hour setting where I, where I draw these things. You know, now that I'm looking at it, I, I might have drawn that neck a little too thick. I don't know yet, but we'll see. So now I'm just kind of playing with some of the, the heads here. So I got one, two, three, four. Okay, so five. Okay, we'll put six, seven, eight, and then we'll do nine right here and it's going to be looking at you so check this out we're going to do a face and we're going to make this one as terrifying as the first one so let's do it let's do that together guys all right again this thing does not care about you it doesn't care about anything all it cares about is for you to die <laughs> okay now we got the face going on here. We got these crazy gnarly teeth. And the thing that's going to make this angle especially vicious is that uh, the angle, you can definitely see the snarling of the head or the snarling of the face, I should say. There we go. I'll put some tentacles in the back there. Now we got to make sure that the, the jaw is rounded. Okay. Now here's a center line that I'm definitely going to need right there. I want to make sure that it's equal. So I'm going to put some teeth coming out here. Teeth coming out there. Okay. So one thing I noticed, haha, I have to use my eraser. Can you believe it, guys? All right. This was incorrect. So I gotta draw that face right there. There we go. Now I'll draw that crazy face. Okay, and that bottom jaw is gonna be coming out right about there. And then we have the really cool jaw structures and it's going to be appearing in front of that neck because it's happening closest to us. Okay, so we got some other crazy stuff going on here on the side. I might give it even a stronger ri brow ridge than originally planned because there are some, some lines going across its head. Like that. And we're going to shorten up that neck in the back. Like so. Okay. So then... Notice how loose I'm being with this. This is the fun part. Okay, and then I'm, I'm actually not gonna make that tongue stick out too much, just enough to where you can see it. And I'm gonna give it a nice coating of value. Okay, this is obviously gonna be darker than the other parts of the head. All right, so one of the things I'm noticing as I'm drawing this head here is that I need to find a way to make this look longer. So I think I'm going to shorten up this and maybe let's see what happens if I just darken all that. There we go. Shorten that up width wise. Make the cheeks protrude still. There we go. Okay. That's a little better. And now we can have, I'm gonna make sure this is, this is even. So it looks like this doesn't really pop out as much and this one's pretty wide. So maybe this will be longer here and it kind of goes up at an angle. So we're gonna have to keep that intact. Okay, so I wanna make sure that, that that looks pretty even. I'm gonna need some more 
details on that face. So let's jump into that part, put in some indication of some sinus cavities right here. Okay, so we're gonna need to put those, those crazy lines in right here. Okay, because you can see them right down there as they roll and they actually come above the eye. So we're gonna need to honor that. And then this little part, of course it doesn't have to be exact. All right, roll it there. And then this part rolls. Okay, little spikes coming off the head. There we go. Again, it's not going to be perfect. Like each head is different. Maybe this version of the Hydra, the heads actually did grow, but differently. All right, I'm gonna give this a nice wash. There we go. So this is a much, much looser version. Those of you that are coming in just now, uh, you know, th those are a much looser versions of the stuff that I normally draw. There we go. Okay. I'm going to have to sharpen my pencil here real quick. Okay. Um, oh, we still have more heads to go. But check this out. So this is when I abdicate for scribbling because scribbling, you can achieve so much with it. I'm going to scribble this head right here. I'm going to give it some shape. And then I'm going to open the mouth. Boom. That's all I'm going to show. I don't need to show anything else because I don't want to. That's not important. This and this is important. These are my selling points. All the other heads are not my selling points. They're just there to help complete the design. So there's the cheek. Okay. Now, what I will do is I will still give it a nice little coating of graphite, but probably in only one direction and only once. I don't really need to do anything else. Now, the heads that are happening in front of it, yes, I will give it just a little bit darker of a touch. I will give it some more love. Um, you know what would be fun? Is if we just give this a spike. Why not? Not the same. So now I'm going to push just a little harder to make this value stand out versus the value that's right behind it with that head. So you can see, here's some atmospheric perspective happening already. You got the darkness of these two heads up front, and then you have the mid-ground, then you have the foreground. That's gonna happen throughout everything else that we're drawing, like so. Now, um, if, you, if you want to spend another three, four, five hours on a drawing like this, you can definitely take these scribbles and you can make it your own, that, definitely. All right, so this one, something just fell off my desk and I don't know what that was. So that's what that noise was. All right, I'm gonna draw these two eyeballs right here because it's looking directly at us, but this is gonna be a little different. This is going to be at eye level, so I need to figure out how far down the teeth are from the eyes if we were looking at it straight ahead. And it looks like the muzzle ends right about there. And then it comes back. Cheek protrudes out, outward. Okay, so now what we can do is we can open up that, that bottom jaw to where it almost looks like a snake. Okay, and then we'll indicate some there we go. We'll indicate some cool teeth coming out. Uh, that head, again, we're going to honor the sporadic design of the crazy aquatic appendages coming off. It kind of looks like a windigo almost. Okay, we're going to do that. All right, guys, guess what? We're going to scribble in that neck because we can. Okay, we're going to darken some of the other necks that are showing up just a little bit in front. Okay, so it looks like that neck is attached right there, maybe down here, and this one's on the side. Okay, we're going to have to think about the collarbone, the chest, 
that's not so important just because the face is the bigger feature here and notice how i'm i'm kind of jumping from one spot to the to the next and that's because whenever i start to add in the complete picture i get a sense of what i want and when i start to see what i really want I also start to see what I don't really care about adding more detail to. And that just so happens, you know, like things back here. Okay, so I can put in that mouth and I can open up that like this, put in a little eye to indicate at least where it is. I'm going to put in some little dark lines to show that the jagged teeth are growing off of that thing. Like this, maybe the tongue's coming out. So. Also, the other thing that I want to make sure of is most of the heads are at a different angle. Okay, so I'm definitely going to keep that. I'm going to go back to this head here because I really love drawing this one. <laughs> that was a lot of fun. And we started with that one, right? So that's like the favorite one. There we go. So just show some, some value changes here. The inside of the mouth has a very light... Uh, coating a value so I'm going to make sure that the teeth and parts of the lips are showing up darker above it so that way there's a difference there's a contrast in between here and I'm also spending more of the time on this particular head than anywhere else because I want to see you or I want to show you how if you just add detail in one area and be convincing with it that you can start to have viewers fill in the imagination with what they believe is going to be happening around the rest of the Hydra. Okay. How many heads we got? One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so we're going to need to do three more. All right, there we go. If you've been sticking with the video so far, congratulations. Hopefully you're, you're drawing along with me. That'd be a lot of fun. Okay, there you go. A lot of my sketchbooks are actually filled with drawings like this. Like, yeah, I, I do have a lot of them where I illustrate, and I'm on it for hours and hours and hours and hours, and it's this huge piece. However, I have just as much fun, if not more, with pieces like this because I don't really have to think about it too hard. I just, I just want to make sure that I get my idea across, and if I wanted to take it to detail at a later time, I wouldn't feel bad about the drawing because, hey, raise your hand. You know, those of you that are listening right now, raise your hand if you have opened up brand new sketchbooks and drew one thing on a page, hated that one thing that you drew, and you ruined your entire sketchbook because you didn't want to draw it anymore. You just flip it to the next page, you start erasing a lot, and nothing's ever, nothing's ever good enough. Okay, yeah, I've been there. Been there, done that many, many times. All right, so I'm just going to indicate where these heads are because I don't I don't really want to get into too much detail. Uh, there's no point, especially the the heads back here. Now I could probably um, show at least the detail of the of the teeth, but maybe that one up there isn't opening it all the way. But I am going to draw the appendages coming off like a serpent. There you go. And then there's the other one. So one, two, three, four, five. Wait. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, it needs one more head. Oh, there it is. It's hiding back there. But I don't eh, I don't like that angle. So maybe maybe if we draw it coming off here, so there's the eyeball. Some parts of the bone structure are showing, but maybe it didn't open its mouth. It's just kind of snarling at something we're going to do some overlapping teeth so that you can see the the chomping going on with these things again just like the elasmosaurus okay um i really like the silhouette of this one so much so that it, it kind of reminds me of a just a regular dragon so i'm going to put in some more detail i'm going to show you something fun here in a minute folks this is what I do to get a lot of detail at once. All right, you ready? Watch this. I do this. I'm going to scribble everything in. I'm going to scribble in the claws because I don't care. 
by making sure that the gesture is there though. So you have to think about the way the weight is distributing, 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 distributing over the hand. Okay, this thing is massive, so you have to draw the back foot too. Just indicate where it is. Maybe the, the thigh in the back is curled up. Okay, there's the calf muscle, so the toes are spread apart. All right, there's the bottom of the chest. There's the ground right there. Okay, let's zoom out just a little more so you can see what's going on. Right about there. Let me adjust that light. Okay, so now we have a pretty large hydra. Um, at this point, yeah, I could go back in and just start putting in some more details, maybe some sharper teeth, some fangs, because everything now, it's going to be about choosing what is coming at us, okay, versus showing off everything that's happening. Um, I'm going to give some value to these lonely heads over here, because I didn't really shade anything over here yet. Um, there we go. Okay, and then this head right there. Yeah, something like that. Okay, so this, this one, I'm actually going to indicate more of the spine and what's actually going on with that neck so that you can use your imagination to fill in the gap. Okay, same thing with this head right here. So those, those fins are going to go up the middle of the, the neck because that neck is coming straight at us. So we're just going to keep it that way. Show those teeth coming off on the side. I'm going to darken those cheeks so much so that you're not going to be able to see the eyes really. Maybe it's like in shadow. It's just like really creepy, man. Maybe some saliva. Let's draw that tongue. Why not? Let's draw that tongue on the side. Okay. Uh, we're going to darpen, darken, darpen. Man, what is wrong with my talking today? Oh, man. It's Christmas, you know? Been up since 4.30. 4.30 and it's like 2.45 p.m. It feels way later, but luckily the winter solstice already passed, so every day the days are getting just a little longer. Sun still goes down here in Connecticut at 4.30, and we still feel the effects of winter, but I'm already thinking of spring. I don't know about you guys, but I love hot weather. Not so much humid, but I don't like, I hate the cold. Nothing good comes from the cold. There we go. Okay, so now I'm just kind of playing with some areas where I, th where I think I can put some shapes in here. Man, this face is like really terrifying because of how dark it is. So I'm just going to put some value on top of the nose, and I'm just going to fade off the value into the head. And then maybe up here. Okay, so that head, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put in some mist. I'm going to take, I'm going to take some value, and I'm going to come off of the, the head here, and I'm just going to fade it right into the neck. And I'm going to do the same thing at the bottom of the jaw. So it looks like it's bleeding mist. This is what I used to do to a lot of my drawings to give the illusion, not only of, of atmospheric perspective, but also it, that it's moving through something physical. Okay. Especially if it's a hydra, you know, if it's a hydra, you think, well, this thing lives at the sea, whatever it lives near land wise, probably lagoon like. So there's going to be a lot of steam or mist or something happening within the bodies of water and waterfalls and just strange bodies of water that are sitting in the jungle. I don't know. Okay. So like any area that's not finished on the edges, I'm just going to take my pencil and I'm going to fade off one to two different directions and I'm going to make it jagged. So here's what I'm talking about over here. You'll be able to see it. See this fin right here or this, this shape coming off of the chin. I'm going to take this Instead of giving it a sharp line and finishing it, I'm actually going to fade it off into the background. I'm just going to push hard, le less, 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 and then let go. So what that does is it looks like it's passing through something physical, something that's floating on the, on the page. All right, put some on the neck here. There we go. Yeah, that's looking a little better. And also there's going to be some cast shadow happening inside that mouth. 
and especially underneath the teeth where it attaches to that jaw. So look, look what happens as I darken that jaw. It gives the illusion that if this is lit from above, you can definitely see there's lighter value here. And then all of a sudden this whole section is darker in value because that's the skin tone. But why would I keep the inside of the mouth lighter and not just make that jet black? Well, it's because it's a different material. And also the head is tilted. If it's tilted to the side, the light could be getting in there somehow. You have to think about that. This is, those of you that are, are just learning how to draw, this is where the play of values next to each other really, really helps. If you understand this, then you can make anything pop off the page. Okay, so for example, this dark that I'm adding in here, I'm looking at the value on the sides of it, and I'm going, okay, it's kind of stark. What if I blended that in a little bit? This whole chin with a cheek is casting a shadow on that bottom jaw. So I'm going to darken up right underneath that chin. Okay. So now it looks like the light is hitting the forehead, but there's not a lot of light happening here, but I have a little bit of a light catcher on that cheek and that's probably going to roll right up into the rest of the head. So I'm going to put one of those other appendages coming off aquatic appendages. Now here it is again, look at the aquatic appendage. That could be darker like this, and I'm going to fade it off into that light catcher. Now notice that since I did that, this tentacle or appendage and then this one next to it are lighter. So that means that these could be passing through mist and this one's showing up. It's also a play on value. All right, so the, the same thing can be said about this one coming off of the head. Okay, so if, if I darken the tip and fade it off, getting lighter, and then I get darker again, right down here where it grows out of the brow ridge. Now there's a difference between this and this, but this is darker. So look at this cool thing that happens when you do that. I'm gonna zoom in. Now it looks like there's some mist right over that appendage, and I'm just gonna keep it. Maybe add in just a little bit more darkness so you can see the thing. But other than that, I'm not going to do anything. Okay, now I have the edge of the face. I'm going to match that value and I'm going to fade it off into the air with no outline of the face. So now I have some pretty cool mist effect, but also atmospheric perspective. And you can kill two birds with one stone doing it like that. It, so like drawing this Hydra, you've probably watched me not really give a crap about 95% of where I'm placing everything. Now, I could go back over this, definitely, and put another 15 hours into it, putting in all the details. All these scribbles will change into something. And I did have to use my eraser once. It, it does happen, but I advocate not using it. But you probably will have to erase some of these scribbles because n not all of them are making sense. It's more gestural. Same thing happens in figure drawing, okay? If you want to do a really polished, tight figure drawing, then you might start off with gestures like this, move around the body until you get something you want. Same thing could be said about creature design. Hope you enjoyed today's lesson. I love drawing the Hydra. It is a lot of fun. You can join our Creature Design Discord for absolutely free, and that is a link in the bio below. And if you want to take the actual Creature Design Workshop course, uh, the link is in the bio also. Thanks, everybody. I'll see you soon.